I wanted to start in the early days before I get into my main question. I want to hear a little bit about who Mary Lou was when you were younger. Like what kind of things were you doing back then? What was your first job? Tell me a bit about you. So my first job was right out of undergraduate school. So I studied psychology, political science, and sociology. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a counselor or a lawyer. I took my LSATs, did really well, but then said, okay, well, let's just go ahead and see how the counseling goes first. And so I got a job as a residence counselor at a university with the thought that if I worked for a university, I could go back to graduate school for free. So there was kind of a selfish and then testing the waters. I learned after about six months that my personality is the type that I can't really separate my emotions from a situation and said, okay, well, psychology isn't going to be the path forward, but I really thought applying psychology to business would make a lot of sense for me. So I got another job at a university. I worked more on the practical side, administrative side, so I could go back to school and study industrial psychology and more on organizational development and strategy, more practical applied psychology approaches to business. Wow. That's a smart pivot back then. I mean, to be younger and already have a pivot idea to be like, well, I don't really like that. But here's how I can still use it. Yeah, I, I was at least glad I could use something from the, <laughs> the first initial investment. But I, I just knew very early on it was not going to be a, a good choice. So right out of my graduate studies, the program itself kind of fell apart at the very end. It was a pilot study program. And I was in an externship at at and And that's when I first got involved with really working in kind of the CPG side of the business, right? And understanding that side of the business. And then I had several jobs in my early career that was all organizational development, change management, and a lot of kind of business consulting, professional development type of roles that ultimately led me to CVS Pharmacy, where I spent a good part of my career. Tell me a bit about CVS. What were you so doing So I there? started there in their organizational development and training department, but I got put on a project my very first day in the merchandising space. So they were building the store of the future at the time. And I was brought in as a consultant more on the training and the service side of the equation. And there was a team of people that had been taken out of their jobs, the kind of the best of the best at CVS, and were asked to develop this concept. And I quickly fell in love with the world of merchandising. And so I actually went to the VP of merchandising at the time and said, I think I could be a merchant. And he said to me, I don't think so. You're an HR person. And I said, you know, just watch me. I'm, I'm going to become a merchant. And so I studied and kind of learned that side of the business pretty quick and made that transition over to merchandising and then worked my way up at CVS in a number of roles in the merchandising category management space, also spent some time in the inventory management space. And my career there was incredibly rewarding and also just gave me such a wealth of knowledge because I was pulled out several times because of my strength in kind of project management to run these key transformation initiatives. So I really got to learn supply chain. I really got to learn inventory management and I was playing kind of an internal consulting role, which really helped me in where I am now. But I don't think I realized it at the time. I just realized I was being asked to do something and I you know, learned a lot and it was great. But I always wanted to go back to merchandising. And so it was fabulous. Anybody, if you ever get a chance when you're working for a company and if somebody asks you to work on a project that you don't really want to do, you want to stay in the job you're at, go do it because you'll learn something that that you never would have learned before and it rounds out your experience. It makes you incredibly marketable. Yeah, that's amazing. So, okay, your pivots, you make your pivots sound a little too easy. You're like, well, I was told that I might not be able to be a merchandiser. And I said, I'm going to go do it. What did that look like for anyone who maybe is in a current role and they're like, I don't want to get stuck here forever. Like, what were you doing to try and move yourself in the direction of merchandising? So what I did was I first had to kind of write up what the job descriptions were, what the competencies are really uh, took some time to interview people in those roles to really truly understand the job and then asked for opportunities outside of my day job to shadow people to really start to learn it and kind of study the roles. So 
when they finally put me in a role, I felt like I was ready for it. I mean, just that studying and really defining it and being able to present my business case back to why I think I could be a good fit was here are all the transferable skills. Here's the competencies. Here's what I've done to develop it. Here's what I still know are my gaps. But in order to fill those gaps, I actually need to get to the role, right? And do mm -hmm. it. So that was my business case and argument for the role. It didn't happen overnight. It was a several asks at the table to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always just fun thinking about how to navigate within a company and hop around levels. I know back when I was at Google, it was so hard to get outside the ladder. Like when you are in finance, it's like kind of hard to become a PM. And when you're a PM, it's kind of hard to get into like the engineering org. And so always thinking of like the strategies, I like the way of, I guess that's kind of like back forecasting like here's where I want to be and here's the different credentials I need to get that job and what can I do to try and get to that role and what I also tried to do was ask certain individuals throughout the organization that work in that space to mentor me and so if I was kind of sitting in on a meeting and I saw something happening and I didn't quite understand it I'd go back with my list of questions to say you know given this business scenario is this how you would have handled it why did this person handle it that way? You know, what is the norm? So just really try to, to learn it from a very practical way. Be because in many organizations, you're right, you get very, you get pigeonholed in a spot. And unless you make that happen for yourself, people aren't going to all of a sudden say, oh, wow, Stephanie, you'd be a great category manager. You know? <laughs> yep. yep, yep, completely agree. So you kind of took on this consultant role while you were navigating through CVS and other places. What drew you to Infosys? Well, again, that was a, there was a further journey. So when I left CVS and I went to the consulting side of the business for a year and more on the CPG side of the equation. So it was working with a smaller boutique firm and we worked with a lot of companies like Johnson and Johnson and Bosch and Lom, Ricola. So on the CPG side, everything from new market entry to trying to understand how to launch a product within a particular retailer. I did that for a year and then went back to the retail merchandising world. And I went to Fred's Pharmacy, which was a fairly small regional pharmacy chain. I say that we were 700 plus stores. So it wasn't that small, but small compared to CBS Pharmacy. And I went and worked there for a few years and started in strategy, helping them put together their kind of turnaround strategy at the time. And then it ended up as the chief merchant and marketing officer. That company was in financial trouble when I went there. And I knew that, and I was hoping that it would turn around and be more successful. And it didn't, didn't end up there. A venture capitalist group got involved and ultimately took the company apart. And so all the entire executive team was let go. And I knew I still wanted to work. I wasn't done working. I didn't necessarily have to work, but I really wanted to do something. But I took the summer up, came up to Maine, did a lot of reading, a lot of downtime, realized that you can only read so much. Well, what were you reading? Maybe that's the real question here. Well Anything and everything I get my hand on, you know, okay. kind of summertime reading to whoever wrote the latest and greatest, you know, way to be successful in business and, you know, negotiating and that type of stuff. But I was on my way back to Tennessee at the time. I had a home there and got a ping on LinkedIn from this gentleman, Ken Berry, who I now work for. And he was at Emphasis and he said, we have this opportunity in Vancouver, British Columbia to work with a client, a retail grocery chain, and they're in the middle of this really large transformation effort. And we need somebody with your experience in merchandising and inventory management and supply chain. And I said, well, it sounds great, but let me just dip my toes in the water. I'll come in as a subcontractor. And that was four years ago. I subconned for them for probably a year and a half, almost two years, and then joined the company as a full-time associate partner. What does Infosys do for anyone who doesn't know? Infosys is an interesting company. It's out of India, but we have offices in Europe and offices in the United States and South America. It's a very large tech company and consulting firm. So I work on the consulting side of the business. Emphasis Limited is more on the technical side of the business. So really the magic for Emphasis is that a lot of times a company is either just a tech company that provides a lot of technical services that comes in and does implementation, and they have to partner with another business consulting firm that brings that thought leadership. We have both. 
And so what happens is we'll be doing a large scale transformation in, a, in an organization where they're, for example, one of the projects I'm working on is they're transforming their entire merchandising organization and supply chain enabled by a very large implementation of Blue Yonder. So I bring the expertise of Blue Yonder and all the business process and you know, best practices to the table. And then the technical side brings how to implement it. And then we come together and we go through that transformation effort. So it's, you don't have to be a technical person. You just have to know how that technology needs to enable the business. Somebody else can go off and build it. And so I understand how it should work, not how it works. We actually had Blue Yonder on the show. I think they were probably hundred episodes or something ago, but very fun crew and hearing about what they were doing. I was like, wow, no wonder you guys are where you are and you're blowing up the way that you are. So tell me about some of the, maybe the most interesting projects that you can share that you're working on right now, just so people can kind of conceptualize like what Infosys is doing. So that project that I was just mentioning is mm -hmm. one of my very interesting projects because it, it's going across the spectrum of supply planning, demand planning, visual merchandising, category management, enterprise planning. So it's everything. If you think of everything that would happen in a retail organization, eventually we're touching it and transforming it. So for a company to take that on that kind of commitment means that they're very committed to growth. They're very committed to becoming relevant and keeping up with the paces. And so that's been a lot of fun and they're a great, great client to work with. So I really enjoy that project. And then I have other projects that we're doing a micro fulfillment center implementation. It's a greenfield implementation for this organization because they have warehouses, but they didn't know anything about micro fulfillment. So I, I'm the lead, but I've got this expert on micro fulfillment strategy and how to implementation. And so I'm learning along with the team because we've got this expert who knows everything and we're building a new capability for emphasis to take forward. But we do a variety of different things. You know, we did an automation project to implement bots at a company to automate a lot of the, and streamline their processes to free up people to be able to focus on more value add activities. So that was a lot of fun. We just did the assessment work initially. And then we worked with this one, one of my same clients that it was standing up a standalone restaurant next to a grocery store for the first time. And so working with them on how to do that and, you know, what is the POS system that you need? What are the processes that you need? And what's the new latest, greatest technology? And so we'll do a lot of those assessments for them and make sure that, particularly if it's complete white space for them, that they've never played in. Hey, thanks for watching. This segment was made possible by our friends at Salesforce Commerce Cloud. If you're looking for the number one platform for all your commerce needs, go check out salesforce.com slash commerce. And don't forget to subscribe below and tap that little bell icon so you can stay on top of all the amazing new segments and full episodes that we'll be putting out over the coming year with some of the best and most influential commerce leaders out there.